Formatted searches, now referred to as user-defined values, are a mystery to many users of SAP Business One. They provide some degree of custom automation in your system where it might not have it otherwise. Over this series of three videos, we'll discuss how to make and use UDVs in SAP Business One. To start, we have to understand system information. System information gives you almost everything you need to know about an item in SAP Business One. You use this information for real-time data gathering necessary for UDVs. If you've worked in SQL, you've probably used system information before. I covered it in SAP Business One Reporting and Customization. You turn on the option over here in View, and you go to System Information here. And you'll see also that there is a keyboard shortcut of Control-Shift-I. So I'm just going to click it on. System information contextually tells you user interface and table information as your cursor hovers over part of SAP. Currently, I have no windows open. So if I go over here, let's say to Tools, and I'll go to Queries, and I'll go over here to the Query Manager. You can see in the lower left corner a menu UID in square brackets of 4865. If I had a customization add-on, like Boyum's B1 Usability Package, I could automatically use UIDs to launch parts of SAP with this number. Now I'm going to go over here and hover over the main menu. Okay, and I'm just going to go over here where it says OEC Computers. Now if you look on the bottom, you'll see several pieces of information. First, we have our value, which is the name of the company, OEC Computers. In square brackets, you'll first find a form number. SAP Business One's user interface is a hierarchy of items. At the top of this hierarchy are forms. Below forms are panes, which you might see as tabs in SAP Business One. Inside panes, there are items, each with a number. Every field in SAP Business One has a unique ID of a form and an item with additional information on which pane it appears. The company name on a main menu is 169.7 for form 169, item 7. Similarly, the user name is 169.8. Now let's go ahead and open up a sales order. So I'm going to go over here to sales, sales order, and I'll just pick the last one here. Let's go back one for fun. There we go. So we have a multi-line one. I'm going to hover over the customer number here. This field is form 139, pane 0, item 4. I can abbreviate this as 139.4. There's a variable for use here with the legacy PLD reporting system. I discussed that more in the SAP Business One Reporting and Customization course. Next is the table and column this field pulls from, ORDR card code. Another example would be the sales order number itself over here. We can identify this as 139.8 for form 139, item 8. Its table is ORDR, and its column is DOCNUM. As an aside, the wonderful design of marketing documents applies to these item numbers. If I go over here, for example, I'll pull up modules, let's go to sales, let's go to an AR invoice and I hover over here, you'll see that we're on form 133 for an AR invoice, but the item number is the same. Item numbers will match up on marketing documents for most of the major ones that you're going to be playing with. So I always know that number eight is going to be the doc num for a marketing document. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and come back over here to my sales order. Let's go over here to logistics first, and I'm going to click over here on the shipping type. And we're going to see something a little different here. We first see 139 for the form and item 121. We also see pane 6. Panes are the tabs in the form. The header is pane 0, but tabs underneath it will have other pane numbers. So it's another way that you can address things in a user interface. Also notice the value of the shipping type is negative 1 here. It's a number. System information gives you raw data, not the displayed data. There's a link somewhere to that longer description. And if you get a number like negative 1 here, that probably means it's blank, as in the case here with the shipping type that hasn't been set yet. All right, I'm going to go back over here to Contents tab. And I'm going to click Quantity in the first row here. And you'll see a lot more information in the system information. We've got a lot of the same stuff. We've got our value of 3. We know it's form 139. It's item 8. 
we're now on pane one, which is the contents pane. And then we get two more pieces of information, column 11 and row one. When you're in a table like we are here with the item numbers, you'll see that it gives you the exact position on the table. We are in row one of this table, but we're also in column 11. If I hover down to the other two items here, you'll see that the row number changes, but the column doesn't. But if I move over here to the item description, you'll see that my column number changes. Now notice something else about this quantity that I've hovered over. On the line above our system information, it tells us that it's a quantity, but it also has in parentheses numeric 19.6. This means that it's a number. There are different types in SAP Business One. If you float over here to the item description, you can see that's characters. If you float over here, you get nothing at all for the item number. And if you go over here to, let's say, one of the document dates or the delivery date, you'll notice that on that line after document date, it says date. There are major types you'll need to know that are used for different things. There are characters and strings, and those will get punked together as one generic type for strings and some kinds of the integers, which are things like these indexes here, or the index up here. Another type that you'll find is a date. And the last one you'll find is a numeric. Now we'll need to know this to refer to the field in SQL as we are doing different things. And it will also help us as we do our UDVs and figure out what this field is going to be doing. There's a lot you can see in system information. If you're writing SQL queries using a customization or automation add-on, user-defined values, or making a form in PLD, you'll use the system information to identify how to structure your project. In our next newsletter video, I'll show you the next step in making a UDV, using a special nomenclature to grab values in real time from a user interface and then add them to an SQL query.